Hey, y'all, we're Brandon and Megan Giggling, and we give real talk and real solutions to help you get from where you are to where you want to be. Whether you are on step one or years into your own personal growth journey, we've got the tools you need to level up. So if you want to stop making excuses, start taking action, and grow into the person you are meant to be, then pop in your headphones and let's do this. You ready? This is the Fools in Love Podcast. Hey y'all, welcome back. It is another week on the Fools in Love podcast and I'm here with my beautiful and lovely co-host. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about something that we've kind of been wrestling with recently and it's one of the things that we talk about a lot on this podcast, which is about the whole idea of personal growth. Although we believe in personal growth, we're not saying we don't believe in personal growth, as we've kind of progressed to different layers of our own personal growth journey, we've seen that there's almost this underbelly, this dark side of personal growth that if you aren't careful, can really drag you down more than it lifts you up. Absolutely. It's been one of these things where we've had like a few different conversations over the past several weeks and months, and it comes up in different ways. And we'll kind of talk you through all those different ways that we've kind of noticed that this can pop up. But It's just something that's kind of one weighing heavy on our hearts. Like we don't want to be like, oh yes, personal growth. There's, there's no downside. It's just everybody's journey is great and amazing and easy. And it's just all fun and games because really that's not the case. It's hard work. And not only is it hard work, there's definitely some negatives to it if you let them become negatives. And that's, I think where the trick is, is to understand where some areas of kind of some uncertainty or areas of like caution should be used and really take those to heart as you proceed through your own journey. Yeah, I mean, even as I was thinking about recording this episode, I, I, I really honestly thought that, like, was I better off, like, before I ever delved into anything with personal growth, with self-help, with, with any of this stuff? Because we kind of accidentally stumbled on it. It wasn't like I was looking for it. It's just the areas of my life I was in led me to it, and we didn't even put a word to it. We didn't know what it was, but I found myself reflecting last week, honestly, about whether I was better off before this, and let me kind of break down what I mean by that. So obviously, before we ever kind of delved into this personal growth space, before we tried to you know, take our lives and better it, I was actually unhappy, but it almost seemed easier, right? I mean, like I was, I was in the, in the monotony each day was a struggle, but I didn't feel like I should be doing more. Even if in my heart, I felt like it, I didn't like speak it out. I kind of just was lackadaisical. I was lazy. I was living comfortably and happy, just doing the day-to-day things. And I didn't ever feel the stress and the weight of needing to be more or wanting to be more because what I had, I mean, I had food in my stomach. I had a house to live in. I had a wife. I had a job. I had all the things without all the real work, like the, without the work of it. And as I reflected on it, I was, well, I did have all that, but I was also miserable in that place. I was really like pressing a lot of things down and having a lot of struggle But in a lot of ways, I think once you, I always talk about, it's like the matrix. Like when you take the pill and you see that you're, you were living in the matrix and now you see the other side, you can't go back. Once I've seen the other side, I can't go back. And that's both a gift and kind of a curse because I constantly feel like I don't measure up. Like I'm not doing enough, no matter how much I do, no matter how exhausted I get, no matter how many things that I'm pushing myself into that I'm never enough. And that is heavy, my friends. It's heavy. Mm, That's so good. So without even meaning to, you kind of touched on, well, a couple different things that we're going to dive into. But one of those things that I heard you just say is that you just felt like you're never done with growth. And if you're never done with growth, for me, that would kind of like the next step of that would be like, 
if I'm never done, then there's never going to be time for rest. Like I always need to be doing something. When you were talking, it kind of brought me back to when we first started personal growth and I was smiling and I don't know if you noticed me smiling, but I was, and you were just on the beginning of your personal growth journey and you were stressing me out. Like you <laughs> were so gung ho that like you literally watch TV if you even did it at all, like on the edge, the actual literal edge of the couch, because you were so uncomfortable with sitting in your newfound journey that like you couldn't even relax. You did not want to sit on the couch and like put your head back or put your butt back in the seat. You had to be on the edge until one night I was like, uh, Brian, we got to talk about this. Like you are so wrapped up in what you're doing that you're making me uncomfortable. Like you're making me feel miserable watching you. <laughs> Right. And I mean, I was I was talking to a friend last week and we were talking about how that exact idea, the idea that we're touching on here is the paradox of personal growth. You constantly are growing. You, you constantly can change. You constantly could be doing better no matter what you attain. So then when do you ever let off the gas? When do you ever give yourself a break, give yourself a chance to rest? And you're right, when I was new in that, and I would say I even struggle with it now. And I don't so much struggle with it by being on the edge of my seat like you were talking about, but it comes in the form of guilt. Mm -hmm. It comes in the form of, why aren't you? It comes in the form of that negative voice. You, you know, you're incapable of doing this, or why aren't you doing more? And you should be doing more. And even though you're doing these things, you're just giving yourself all these excuses, why, are you, why aren't you doing the things you're supposed to be doing? Why are you stopping right now? Why are you taking a rest? Why are you taking a break? And I know from our conversations together, you struggle with it too, but I would love you to touch on that. The, the guilt is real. Oh, that is absolutely my number one thing that I struggle with. It's like there are days when it's a weekend day where I'm just exhausted. I haven't slept well or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, right now is the perfect time for me to take a 30-minute nap and I can't because, and then I'll list like 10 things that I should be doing instead. And there are so many times when you've had to be like, I mean, I get there's a million things to do, but also like there's always going to be a million things to do. Just take the nap. Like you don't take a nap seven days a week. You barely ever take a nap. If you feel like you want to take one, just go lay down. And sometimes it really takes you kind of not, I mean, not forcing me, but sort of like giving me the okay to do it because I just feel so overwhelmed with all the tasks. And whether that's like a personal growth task or a podcast task or a blog task or like household or children or wifing or whatever, it doesn't matter. There's 5,000 things that we could all be doing at any given moment, right? So pick anything that you have on your to-do list, real or imagined, and you can find a reason why you shouldn't be resting and why you're just not done. And so I struggle with that both in like a hanging out with my kids and my family and Brandon thing. And I struggle with that and the very real personal growth aspect too, where I just feel like if I rest, then I'm not becoming the better version of myself. Yeah. And I think, I mean, if we can be real completely, I mean, it's, it's had that exact thing has had an impact on our relationship too. I mean, we had a discussion just last week where we were talking about how I personally, I mean, if you're okay with me sharing, like I'm, I felt like I was inconveniencing you by needing to be near you. One of the things that is a love language for me is touch and like physical closeness. Not just you telling me you love me, like feeling you near me. But the times when I would like come near you, I felt like I was just an inconvenience. Like I was another task on your to-do list to check off. Mm -hmm. And like we had to be real and honest about that. That's that's something that like we're working on. And I mean, we've made strides in a week. I mean, we're going to continue to work on it. But I think that's not the only aspect of your relationship that this thing can affect. Oh yeah. I mean, so often you hear from people where they start doing this personal growth thing and then like they're looking at their partner with like a lens of negativity or resentment or that person's holding them back or that person's mismatched with where they are. So maybe it can't work. Maybe they're not the person for them. Mm -hmm. If one of you is further ahead on the journey than the other, then clearly that means one is better than the other. And of course, we know that's not the case, but that's like what you can start to think. And I actually did struggle with this at one point before we ever had really started what we would now call our personal growth journey. But many years ago, I just didn't feel like Brandon could ever 
become what I would need him to be. Like I wanted to strive for more, but I thought, I mean, he was kind of talking about it a little bit at the beginning of this episode. Like he was pretty content with life. He was kind of chilling. And like, if I thought that I wanted more, I just didn't think that he was ever going to want more or be capable of bettering himself. I thought that like we could just, that he would just want to be able to sit on the couch for the rest of forever and that would be good enough for him. And I wasn't going to be able to do that. Therefore we were mismatched. Therefore we had some relationship strife. Yeah, and I I mean, the struggle too is it's just such a fine line Mm -hmm. with everything we're going to touch on. It's just such a fine line because I'm not saying you should accept, like you should have never accepted me not doing the things that I needed to do, not showing up the way. But you can't resent somebody either. But no, but you can't put that resentment on me either and then not talk about it either or like just say they're incapable and then move on. Like we've seen so many relationships just with the people we follow that are just no more because it's seemingly the person couldn't add up to this picture that they put in their head. Yeah, like they outgrew the other person. Yeah, like and you you even hear that kind of language. Well, we just we're not a fit anymore or like they, you know, they've done what they can do, but they're just they're not it for me, so I'm going to go find something else. And whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, whether it's whatever it is, it's a dangerous line to be walking because what can ever be enough for you? Right. What can ever be enough? Yeah, I feel like it's almost like there's this danger that as you grow upwards, you're also growing apart in any of your relationships, or you could be, not that you definitely are, but that you definitely could be growing apart as you are growing into your new self. Right. And I mean, we talk about it firsthand. I mean, we can touch on this. Like we talk about not accepting less, like not accepting that your partner's not going to be there for you and support you and all those things. But understanding though, that your partner's on their own journey. So it might take them a little bit more time. Like for us, you were in a place way sooner than I was to do these things, but it didn't mean that I was incapable of doing them. It just meant that I needed more time, that I wasn't motivated enough, that I wasn't prepared enough for it, that I hadn't gotten to the point, the breaking point. But just because I'm not there yet doesn't mean I can't get there and doesn't mean that you can't challenge me without pushing me away. There's a difference between challenging and trying and attempting and pushing away and resenting and and saying they're not a fit and reaching for something else. And that goes beyond your relationship. That goes everywhere in your life. I mean, no matter what you're doing. And friendships can have this tension too. If, uh, if one is, if one person is trying to kind of outgrow their current self and the other one's just kind of comfortable where they used to be friends, then that can cause some tension and resentment and issues in your friendship too. That's right. And I think the idea that I struggle with, with the whole idea of growth is just, I, I struggle with it that I never feel like I'm enough, that I feel like I'm not enough where I currently am because there's so much for me in the future. And I truly believe there's so much for all of us in the future, but don't let that take away from like what you have right now. Most people take it negatively if they're not in the space or they're looking at personal growth from the outside looking in. They look at it negatively because they're like, well, I'm good. I'm, I am right where I need to be. I'm the person I need to be. So stop telling me that I can be more. And I, we're not, I'm not saying that. No one's trying to say that. If they are, stop listening to them. You are enough. But it doesn't mean that you can't improve. But the struggle is... If you're constantly feeling like there's someone better up there that you can be, the pattern you might fall into is that you're not enough right now. And that's not going to serve you now to get to the place you want to be because you're just constantly going to be pulling yourself back down to the level where you're currently at. I know that I have many times been struggling with this one very hard because there are a lot of times where thinking that you're not enough and confidence levels and ego and all this stuff comes into play and it just can make you feel like a hot mess. Like there's really just so much improving that you have to do that you're not worthy right now and you're nothing right now. And of course that's totally not the case. I know that if I think about it logically, I can tell how far I've come where I'm at right now is still a good place to be. Even though I want to be more, I want to do better. I want to become a different version of myself. The one I am right now is still a good person to be. And I think that we just have to really try to work on like the balance of that because it's so hard. It's so hard to understand that 
there's so much to this personal growth journey that we can be more and also be totally comfortable being like, but also I'm good here too. Like you don't have, it's, it's not one or the other. And I like, we just try to think that it is and it doesn't, it can be both. It can coexist. You can b- want both in the same moment. I think we all struggle with that. We want it to be black and white. It's not black and white. There's a gray area that most of life happens in, but we want it to be this or that. We want it to be, you know, me or you. We want it to be like black and white and clear and clear cut and line in the sand. Like this is, this is it. This is what it means. This is who I am. This is who I'm supposed to be. The reality is we don't know that. It's all the journey. It's all in what we're doing every day. We don't really know what that is or what that isn't. I actually was listening to an audiobook recently and they were talking about different ways you can count yourself to be successful. And they say, if you're better off now in any aspect of your life than you were a year ago, then you can count yourself successful. But I think this world, it's so difficult because what is the definition of success? What does it mean to be successful? What does it mean to be the person you're meant to be? What does that mean? It's different for me and it's different for you and it's different for you listening and it's different for the people that I look up to and it's different for the people that I'm in community with. It's different for everyone. But we get caught up in what it means to be a success. But y'all, like we <laughs> we live in the most, one of the most wealthy countries in the world. A success to us is not the same as a success to someone in like a third world country. Like it's the, but the, you can get really drown out in what success is. Like we were just having a conversation about what we think success would be and, and where we think we would be if we got to that place where we wanted to be. But the reality is we will still be there. It'll still be us. So if we don't deal with the things that we're dealing with, will we see the fruits of that success? And will that success bring any kind of joy in our life? Not just temporary happiness, but real joy. And I think That's what we set out to do in the first place. That's why we started this journey in the first place. We wanted to feel like we were doing something we were passionate about. For me, I wanted to feel like I'm doing something that I was put on this earth to do. Not just doing a job, not just like doing a grind, not just existing, but like feeling like I'm truly successful would mean that I'm truly making an impact. But then there's another struggle with that because you look at impact and you're like, well, I don't have a million downloads on our last podcast episode. Sorry, y'all, if you thought we did, we didn't. We didn't have a million downloads. Not even close. (laughs) If you scroll over to our Instagram account, you're not going to see that we have millions of followers and we have thousands of likes and thousands of comments. But that's how our world defines impact. Most of us do. I've done this. I've been guilty of this. I will look at a person. When a person reaches out to us or a pers- I see a person speaking, I go to their Instagram and I see how many followers they have. And in my head, even though I know that's sick, I, I give some kind of value to that. I'm like, well, you know, oh, they only have, you know, a thousand followers. Bro, you, you have a thousand followers. Yeah, I was going to say, wait, what? <laughs> but it's like you you look at them and you're like, well, you know, clearly if they were legit, they'd have more than that. But y'all, like that's – that's like some people did get there, but other people bought those. Like that's not real and that doesn't give any value to what you're bringing to the world. And flip side of that is there have been so many times where we've reached out to want to be on somebody's podcast and like, well, how many downloads do you have? How many followers do you have? And we get so ticked when like, we don't have the numbers that they need to see for us to like possibly provide value. Because of course the value that you can provide, the impact that you can make is not based on any of that. And it's so frustrating sometimes when like, that's how your worth is determined. Cause you're like, I have so, so many important things to say, but nobody can hear them because you're blocking me by some metric. And it's just, ah just one of those things. And then another thing that has just been really one of the parts of like a negative side of this personal growth thing is that for me, because it's this personal growth journey, I start to believe that that means that I can and should be able to do it all by myself, like personal meaning alone, not personal being a group effort or needing help or some sort of accountability, some sort of companionship, some sort of buddy right next to you like no it's just got to be me it's a personal growth thing and i've just got to keep grinding it by myself and hope for the best yeah it's like well i'm just i'm on my journey i'm doing my thing and it's like you said it's it's personal growth but 
you have to build up the people around you, right? The thing is with the whole personal growth journey is it's like you are on a journey. And if you don't decide to change yourself, no one else can change you. That's really the truth of it. Mm -hmm. You have to decide that something is wrong or not even something's wrong, that something is not the way you hoped it would be and then go out and pursue and strive to be better. It doesn't mean that you can't build community of like-minded people around you. It doesn't mean that you can't have family or friends or your spouse support you. It doesn't mean that you have to take anything on alone. Some of the most miserable people, I think, are the people who are like, I'm going to do it all by myself. That's a great attitude to have. It's even probably a tagline of something for people to say. But what would you do on the mountaintop when you're standing there all by yourself? What are you going to do when you're struggling and you're all by yourself and you don't have anyone to reach out to? Trust me, I've been there and it's not a good place to be. It's a very dark place to be. You're right. I mean, it's something you're like, I feel like I should do this. A lot of times I struggle with, I even had a conversation with you recently. I struggle with, is, is it because I'm a man or is it because I'm a Christian or is it because I'm whatever it is for why I feel this way? Why do I feel like I should be capable of doing everything by myself or that I shouldn't have problems or that I shouldn't have struggles? Why do I feel that way? And I think a lot of it is because of the ideals of this personal growth thing. I don't mean to like slam personal growth. I love personal growth. But the ideal of it is I should be able to go out and do whatever I want. And I can. If I, I white can. knuckle it enough. Right. But I have to white knuckle it enough. I have to be stressed enough. I have to work hard enough and never rest. You know, never rest club. You know, I'm never going to rest. I'm never going to do that. No. Just no. That's not, not, not it. I was recently listening to a podcast, um, Armchair Expert, Dax Shepard. I love it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's something that's just simple for me to listen to. And Brie Larson was on there, uh, Captain Marvel, for those of you who don't know. But it was amazing to me because she was talking about the struggles she's had and struggles she still has for wanting to be someone else. And she said, look, everybody wants to be someone else. And it's like, wait a minute, what? Like, and, and Dax chimes in. He's like, yeah, you know, I, I, I feel that. And it's like, wait, but you guys are rich and famous and have seemingly everything. How could you want to be someone else? And she said it wasn't until she realized that every single person wanted to be someone else, even the people she looked up to the most. Guess what? They wanted to be someone else. That you have to be comfortable in your own skin. You have to be comfortable being yourself because if everyone wants to be someone else, then who is anybody really? It's, it's, it's crazy to think about, but sit with that. Are you comfortable with yourself? Are you comfortable with where you're at? And the hardest struggle, and we'll come back to it with this personal growth thing is you don't feel like you're enough. Y'all, you're enough. You're enough. Just because you're put here for a reason, and maybe you don't know what that reason is, and maybe you're not to that point in your journey yet, doesn't mean that you're not enough in your current skin. You are. You have to believe that. You have to... You have to really believe that and take that in. And it's a struggle that I have. Look, I mean, I'm, we've been completely transparent on this episode. It's a struggle we're both still working through. I'm not going to tell you I have all the answers. I certainly don't. And I hope that we didn't leave you guys confused. I hope we left you with some things to think about. But understand that just because you're on this personal growth journey doesn't mean that you can't rest. It doesn't mean that you're not enough where you currently are. It doesn't mean that you have to do it alone. And it certainly doesn't mean that every single relationship that you currently have is necessarily one that you should and will outgrow. There's so many different aspects of personal growth. There's so many amazing parts about it, but there are some things to think about. And we hope that this episode is giving you some of those things to think about so that you can really truly make personal growth your personal journey. I love it. And we love y'all. We'll see you next week. Thank you all so much for listening. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And if you want to be our BFFs, leave us a review. It helps more people find the show and allows us to share our message with the world. We love y'all.